hey, what do you know? I was just about to pack up and do some other stuff and Elementals just rolled out an email to say that beta version of 3.9 is now available for testing and trying out. Let's have a look at it. The things that have got me really excited are the Loop Builder now being enabled for WooCommerce. Now I've tried out Loop Builder from 3.8. I'm quite impressed and quite like what it does, especially with the fact you can use custom fields, but now it's gonna support WooCommerce as well. And it also says sections, we'll have a look at that. The other thing I also like is the way that you can now apply some advanced rules to your pop-ups as well. Maybe you want it to appear certain number of times per day, per week, per month as well, because I know some people have asked that in the past as well. We can also apply default settings to some of our elements, but let's go in and get hold of uh, the beta version. Now, there is one thing I should mention though, if you've never uh, um, added a beta version is make sure you do it on a testing website or a staging website, because what you're gonna have to do, go to Elementor, go to tools, and then you wanna go to version control, and then right at the bottom down here, it says beta testing, you need to enable that. If you do not enable that, you're not gonna be able to download uh, the beta version. Now it is gonna say here that, you know, do you wanna get emails and updates? Just hit sign up and go for that. Once you've enabled that, go over to dashboard and click updates. Don't go to plugins, cause it won't appear straight away. You gotta click updates. And then what will happen is it will now say, do you now wanna update to this? So I'm just going to ensure that is ticked and then update. Now don't be surprised if after you've done the free version, the pro is still pro. I had to wait for a minute and then click WordPress updates again before the pro beta version was available as well. So just make sure you've got both of them. Of course, you are gonna have to make sure you got WooCommerce installed as well before you start testing this out with the Loop Builder. Right, what we're gonna do is go over to one of our pages. This is one of our fake pages, so don't bother commenting on it. I am gonna stick into here a container. Now, you do have to ensure that Flexbox container is enabled to be able to use the Loop Grid feature, okay? So please ensure you've done that in your experiments. Let's just stick that in there. I'm now gonna go over here and I'm gonna type in loop because we are gonna use the loop grid. We've got previous videos on how you can use this for your posts. Go and watch it, super, super easy to follow and experiment with. Now, before you start to build out your template, you have to kind of ensure that this is gonna be applied to your products. If you now go to query, before you did not have the ability to select products, it was post page, manual, custom, and uh, related. What you can now do is click products. This will now apply to your products. And before we go any further, please do remember you can include or exclude certain terms or categories and items like that. At the moment as well, you only have a grid of three. Once it's built, you can modify that to be five columns, three columns, two columns on the mobile, anything like that. So what we've first done is ensure it's clicked onto products and then we are gonna click create a template you might wanna hit save if it asks you to do that. Now you can start to use any of the items on the left to an extent to build out your grid for your WooCommerce products. Now the ones you see here which are recommended, please don't get fooled by that because when you add in the post title, that is still linked to post. It's nothing to do with your products. So I'm gonna get rid of that. If you were to also use an item like say the heading like that, which you can use by the way, you could go over here, click dynamic tags, scroll down, by the way, I probably did that a bit quick, drop it in, okay, get rid of the header, and then go and click the dynamic tags over here, and then scroll down until you get to one of these items here. So I could go with something like that product title. Now, please bear in mind, but once you've done that, nothing might appear, because you might have to kind of set up your display conditions to add in a preview. So let's do that. Let's go down here to settings in your bottom left. We're gonna to go to preview settings and I'm gonna say ensure this is set on product and I'm now gonna go and pick a product. Let's go with t-shirt with logo and I'm gonna hit apply and preview. Well, that's now then is starting bringing over some of the titles. You will notice though, we now have six items and that's because once the preview is enabled, it now starts to show you how other items would look as well, which can be quite useful. Now, what I'm gonna do is drop the post title back in again into here what you now get is the product title. So this might confuse you a bit. If you drop it in before you do the preview, you get the post. If you now set it to preview for products, it now gives you that. If I'm really honest, I probably won't use the items you see here. I'm probably more likely to just go in and type in product 
scroll down and use some of the items from here or go and drop an item in and then bring it over. Let me show you what I mean. So I could, if I want, go over here and say, let's pop in a image like this below. By the way, you don't have to use what I'm using, okay? You could rearrange it and have your image at the top or anything like that. And of course, don't forget, you would go in and apply your styling accordingly, you know, your sizes. I'm just doing this on a bit of a fly like this. You're waiting, all of that. Let's go back over to the image. I could go here now, hit the dynamic stack, and I could go down and click product image. And what will happen is it will bring over the product image. Once you've hit update and save, it will then bring it over for all the other ones. What's really cool about this is that I can have full on control now over like the size of it. So I might go, let's just make it be a hundred. You wouldn't do that, right? But you could do it if you want. Type in product, I can go down and go, right, what are the other fields I wanna add? Let's drop in the product meta. I've added in the product price and you can rearrange the items to your heart's content. Let me just hit save and back for a moment. I know this looks really ugly because I've not stylized it properly, but can you see here, we're starting to create our own bespoke look. And if I just click over here on the loop grid, but I do not hit edit template. Over here, can you now see the ability has opened up to maybe have uh, four columns going across and maybe we're only ever gonna show four items on the page. Maybe you wanna flip over to the mobile view, we will have two columns for instance, or one, however you wanna lay it out. And you can go in and tinker with the size of the headers, the REMs and stuff like that. But you can be super inventive. Let me just get rid of everything I currently have in here. Let's just clear all of that out. Okay, clear, clear, clear. It's all gonna go unsettled in the preview because we've now cleared out the template. I'm gonna go and use the CTA or the call to action widget. Let's drop that in there. We get the image, we get the text, we get a description. I can now go over here to where we have the stack and I'm gonna say, give me the product image. I'm gonna go to the content. I'm gonna get rid of the heading, click the dynamic tag and I'm gonna say, give me the product title. And I don't want the description, we'll get rid of that. Instead, I want the product short description. I mean, you probably wouldn't wanna do that because your short description might be quite big, but if you did wanna have a bit of a description and you could do, I could change it to be C details. And for the link, I click the dynamic tag again, and I'm gonna pick post URL. So that's the C details. Could click the call to action, go over here and I could change the layout. I mean, you would make it bigger. You might have it like a uh, two per column rather than the four we got because it looks a bit cramped. But don't forget, you can also turn it into this complete different layout. So now you might have your text over the image, depending on how your image looks. You can be really, really bespoke with this. I've just used the call to action widget and you might have noticed that I set the button URL. If we go back over here to where we had the content, I set the URL to be the post URL, so you're gonna go and see more details. I could set it to be for the whole box, so it doesn't matter where you click. Um, so in a way, I could actually do this and get rid of the button. It doesn't matter where you click now, it's gonna take you to the details. But what if you wanna do something a little bit extra? Let me go and drop in another button. Let's just pop it in below change the style of it, and I'm gonna say add to cart. Now over here where we have the link, I'm gonna click the stack. We're not gonna pick the post URL. Go all the way down and you have add to cart, right? So you could have a button up here which is see more details. In fact, let's just re-enable that so it is there. If I now just click on here and change this to be say two, this is ridiculously ugly, right? But I just wanna show you how versatile you can be with this. If I was to now just go to preview, I could hit add to cart. It's been added to the cart. I mean, this again is a fake page. Ignore the color scheme and everything you got there. Now, if I go back over to the page and I just click the actual box with the see more details, this has not been stylized or anything like that. Okay, get over it. This is where you obviously would have set up your single product template and all of that. But what you can now do is have your own bespoke looking shop and you can rearrange your items. You could even if you want, and this might sound a bit crazy, you could hit edit template and don't forget this is, you're all within a template, right? You could drop in say another container if you so want, go to your parent container, change your layout to be row, you know, and you could start to rearrange how it looks. You can have other content or details in there. Um, you can be quite, innovative with your layout. 
So I have not spent a huge amount of time or gone to town on what you could do here. But if you enable this and play with it, where you might have used other plugins to get a much more bespoke looking shop, you can now do that here. And don't forget, you can either use the widgets you've got here, or you could also, for instance, I don't know, let's just go and get heading again. Let's pop heading in over here, click the dynamic tag, and you might want to go in and use, say, a custom field. I mean, I haven't got any custom field plugins on this test website, but you could do that. So if, you, if you're applying custom fields to your products, okay, with pods or ACF, you could bring those through as well. And don't forget, you could probably use them on your single product page as well. This opens the door to a lot of bespoke looking shops. And I'm finally glad that not only have we got the loop builder for posts, it's now coming, well, it's here, once it's final for the products as well. Now let's have a look at the pop-ups where you can set the times or the number of times a day or week or month they appear. Let's go and create a pop-up. I'm just gonna drop a call to action in here because you know, I'm, I'm not really overly that fussed about what we have. In fact, we'll just use one of these WooCommerce images like that. Let's pretend that is our pop-up. We've done the settings for the height, the width, all of the content, the coupon codes and everything. Down here in your bottom left, you have your settings. This is your pop-up settings. So obviously we're not gonna change anything here. There's nothing over here and we're not gonna change anything here. The bit that is important is when you hit publish and you now come on to the conditions and the triggers. So let's check this. Is this gonna be on the entire website? Yeah, it is. Okay, we'll go with that. I've set it to open on the page load of zero seconds, but the key one is advanced rules. It's this one here, show up to X times. Before, you could say it would open, say, three times uh, on maybe the page opening or the page closing. Normally, page open makes sense. But the new item here, and by the way, you do need to make sure you've got Elemental Pro Beta. If you only use the Elemental Free Beta, but not the Pro, this will not be visible. Now you can decide on, well, is it going to be three times a day? I don't know, three times a week? You know, whatever you want. I mean, I I wouldn't go crazy for using some of these features. I have to be honest, this particular one. But it is there for you if you want to use it. Now, if I go over to experiments, there is also a feature here that is now enabled, which is lazy load your background images. I have to be honest. I am a little bit like this with lazy loading images because if you lazy load all your images, you know when you get your page speed performance about your first content full paint and you get a delay on it, it's because you've probably lazy loaded it. So I'm a little bit like mm and ah about lazy loading images. However, the facility is there. I'm gonna to touch on one of the other experiments that has been enabled and it's called save as default. You do have to make it active, otherwise you won't have the option. If I go over now to this, uh, fake page again, by the way, we have an image box and we've got some items in here. I'm gonna go over here. And if I was to drop in, say, a image box uh, just, just from scratch, let's just drop it in here and let's just get rid of what we have here. You can see the styling we currently have applied. If I go here to the image box, um, this has obviously had some, uh, some styling applied to it. I'm just gonna modify this ever so slightly and make it a 40, a little bit bigger there, right? I am now, going to right click this and I'm gonna say save as a default. So sure you wanna change default settings, I'm gonna hit save. That is now saved as a default setting. Let me now remove that image box and let me add it in again. Can you see what it's done there? It's not only has it brought over the image as well, which probably wasn't a good idea. So I'm just gonna go over to this one here and I'm going to delete the image and I'm now going to uh, save that as the default. I should've done that the first time, right? Let's delete what we've got. And now I'm gonna pull over the image box now and pop that there. There is no image. You, um, I mean, again, I'm probably rushing this, right? You wanna have a dummy in image in there or something but it now means that when you drag everything over, it kind of maintains what you did. Now, we did have the global setting as well. Do you remember that? You could go over here and set as global. I always found that a little bit fiddly, especially if you now wanted to change the style. So if you brought over like a global widget, and then you were like, oh, you know what? I wanna change this one to be, change the typography and make it be 50 like that. You had to unlink it from being a global before you could do it. Whereas now I could set a style, set it as default, 
drag it over as many times as I want and it will have that set style. But I can also go in and go, well, no, this one's going to be different from all the others. So that's a quite a neat little feature. If you go to the link in the description, there are lots of other little tweaks and things they've done. However, I like to think that what I've shown you at the moment, especially the one with the saving as default and the loop builder grid, uh, especially that with what you can now do for WooCommerce is great. You don't need to now start using extra plugins. Um, and it starts to make things be a little bit more versatile. Can it be improved? Of course it can, you know, and it's going to need a lot more testing than what I've done today. And I will do future videos on it, but I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. And please do not download and use Elementor Beta unless it's a staging or a testing website to stay safe. Like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag, cause I sing.